for you, and God will continue to use you more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the topic of today, um, someone says, Jesus has interest in you. Will you say that to yourself? Do you believe that? Yes. Jesus has interest in me. Yes. Glory to God in the highest. Ah, no matter what you are passing through, no matter what you are experiencing, have that mind in you that Jesus has interest in you. Hallelujah. Before a man can go to a woman that Hey, I want to marry you. There are some things that exist in that person. Amen? Amen. Before say that, will you marry me? There are some things exist in that person. But the one we are talking about is more than that. It's deeper than that. Amen. Jesus has interest in you. Now begin to change your mentality. Begin to change your thinking. Oh, that why is this this? Why is this that? Why am I going through this? What? No, begin to erase all your why. Erase it. Because what? Jesus has interest in you. Hallelujah. Jesus has interest in you. Amen and amen. Oh, some people will be comparing themselves to another person. Oh, look at this person. Look at how she's doing. Oh, why am I not doing this? Oh, why is my life not this? Why is my family not this? I'm telling you, Jesus has interest in you. The moment you have that in your mind, and you have that, and you are convinced with that. You have confidence in that. Everything, everything will continue to change. Say amen, somebody. Because Jesus does what? Has interest in you. Hallelujah. Jesus has interest in you. Glory to God in the highest. The first thing that you're able to know that Jesus has interest in you is that Jesus loves you. Amen. Turn your Bible to 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Jesus loves you. When I talk about this love that he has in you, 1 John 3, 1. When I talk about this love that Jesus has in you, it's not that, oh, she came to my birthday party two months ago. So when she's celebrating now, I need to go. No, that's not the type of love I'm talking about. Oh, um, she loves him so much. She always calls me. So now I need to call her back. Mm, no, no, that's not the type of love I'm talking about. Oh, She's my friend. I, mm, 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 not that type of stuff we are talking about. Look at what the Bible says. Behold, what manner of love that the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world, doesn't, the, the world does not know us because it did not know him. The whole, what manner of love the Father has towards us. He loves us so much. You know what? The kind of, that kind of love. It is, the Bible says that when you are yet still sinners, Christ does what? Die for us. When we are still wallowing in our sins, when we don't even know him, when we are doing something that he doesn't like, Christ does what? Die for us. That is to say, he saw us with our mess. He saw us even, you know, you know acting bad. I said, you know what? That one. Do you know that one cannot see a mad person on the road and say, I want to marry you? Except if the, uh, the people that are doing cantation said, ah, go and marry them to person that don't go kill. That's the time your life will go kill. Except Babonifa, when they differ for that person. That's the time that they will go and marry such. But in a normal life, you will marry somebody that is your standard. The person that you can take out that this is my wife or this is my husband. Amen? Amen. But in this case, God saw us in our mess. God saw us in our sin. God saw that we are so dirty. We are not even worthy to be called his own. But as of that time, the Bible says, he came he is to save us. He came to change us. He came to wash us off and to be able to, to match up with him. Praise the Lord. So, is that the whole what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us? It was when we are still sinners that Christ died for us. In order to wash us, to cleanse us, to change us, to remind us, so that we're able to fit Him. 
I think I told you one story one time. That one woman was praying, praying, praying for her future partner. And at a point in time, the Lord told him, you know, you say that to your gate man. Go and marry him. And one said, Devil, you are a liar. <laughs> Which gate man is my husband? Uh -uh. From where to where? Gate man, my husband. Uh, no. And he was, he, he prayed again. <laughs> and God said, I told you your husband. Is that gate man? He said, ah. Is it true that you are the one talking? He said, yes, I'm the one talking. Is that gate man? Why? He was, she was thinking that his divorce was the devil. Because they did not match. But in this case, God knew that we did not match. God knew, God is holy. <laughs> he saw us dirty. Yet, he came to us, he paid the price, and he brought us closer to him. Shout hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah. So that is the love that Christ has for all of us. So don't ever think that, ah, why is my life like this? Why is my life like this? Why this? Why that? No, your life is good. Your life is good. So now, believe within you. Have that confidence within you that what? That God loves you. When you, are, when you are wrestling with that, when you have that belief, then everything will be able to go right way. Shout hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah. When God loves you, it means that everything that he has will become yours. Amen? Amen? Because of that love that he has towards you. If only you can accept the love that has towards you. And the first way to accept the love is for you to have him as your, as your Lord and Savior. A lot of people accept him, them with the mouth, not with the action, not in their attitude, not in the way they do things. They said they accepted him. <laughs> you cannot differentiate the believer from the unbeliever, and that's not the way to accept him. Their ways of life is still the same. That's not the way to accept him. You, you need to accept his love by receiving Jesus as a Lord and your Savior. And in that case, your way of life will change. Your attitude will change. Your mentality will change. How? From being dirty to being clean. Amen? And God will continue to be your Lord. We'll be the ruler of the whole thing. Uh, it's good for you to accept him. And the thing is that <laughs> only we don't know Christ can come anytime. So when you accept his love, when he comes, he's only coming for his lover. Are you his lover? Do you do his will? Do you obey him? Or are you just doing pepere, and just swallowing in sin? Is that what you're doing? Oh, you need to change. You need to let God Search your heart. Is your heart with the Lord? Do you really love him? Do you really accept him? Are you really in him? Are you really doing what he wants you to do? Are you obeying him? He's only coming for the people that are serving him. Not for the people that are coming to church. Not for the people that are doing one thing or that in the church. But the people that are upright with him. And it's so easy. Just tell him to help you. And it will help you. Number two reason. Give me first John chapter 3, verse 2. Is that we will be like him. Behold, now we are children of God, and it has not been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him. As he is. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We shall be like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall be like him. Already, he has already created us as his own image. Amen? But he wants us to resemble him in everything that we do. Where were you yesterday? What did you do yesterday? In what you did yesterday, did you resemble him? Is there still something in you that <laughs> your wife shouldn't know that you did? 
Anything that I've done that your husband shouldn't know? Anything that I've done that your parents shouldn't know? Anything that I've done that you cannot do it openly? We are not like him. We need to be like him. We shall be like him. Hallelujah. So begin to rearrange your way of life so that we be like him. In everything that we do, we should be like him. Praise the Lord. He wants us to be like him. The first one is that he loves you. Number two is because he has interest in you and he wants you to be like him. Praise the Lord. Then number three is that he came to destroy the works of the devil. That same first John chapter 3, verse 8. Verse 8. He who sinned is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Come and say that together. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy the work of the devil. Say it one more time. That he might destroy the works of the devil. What are the works of the devil? The, 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 the number one thing of this work of the devil is sin. That might destroy it. Sickness, he wants to destroy it. Sorrow, pain, discomfort, trouble, death, even disappointment. He wants to destroy it. What is it that is still lingering in your life? God wants to destroy them all. That is the main reason why he came. That he might destroy the works of the devil. So if there's anything still lingering in your life, because he has interest in you, he wants to destroy those things, even in your life. Shout hallelujah at somebody. Hallelujah. Because of this interest he has in you, those things will not have any place, no, no longer, even your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Is it pain? It will, have, it will not have any place to stay again. Is it sorrow? It will not have any place to stay, to stay again. Is it disappointment? Is it sickness? Everything, but because he has interest in you, all those things will go. In the mighty name of Jesus, shout hallelujah as somebody. I'm telling you, Jesus has interest in you. Look, when I'm talking about this, this Jesus, he's not the one that will change his mind anyhow. Do you know that today a friend can say, oh, I like you. Tomorrow, don't mind him. I hate him. And that reminds me. <laughs> it just happened recently. The mother told the children, she has two children, that we're not going to be watching any, uh, no iPad during, any, during the week, no TV, no. And one of them said, we are packing out of this house. <laughs> and the mother said, I'm packing out of the house. I think maybe seven. <laughs> and the child, maybe three. I don't even know their age like that. <laughs> we are packing out of this. And the mother said, ah, bye-bye. I said, ah, we are taking with you. The mother with me. <laughs> we are taking you with, me, with us. <laughs> <laughs> the mother said, no, I'm staying in this house. So it's either you comply or you move to where you are moving to. Where are they going to? Who did they know that they are parking to? <laughs> but only because they don't, they don't want that rules as of that time. They say, we are going out of this house. No more TV during the week. I said, we, can, we are going out of this house. And the mother said, bye-bye. <laughs> See you. <laughs> I said, ah, we are taking you with, because they know what the impact the mother has been on them. We are taking you with us. I said, hey, I'm not going with you. <laughs> what am I saying? is that this love of Christ, this interest that he has in us, is not the one that can change his mind just anyhow. 
Since he has given us his love, he did not withdraw it. Not for any reason. Not for any reason. Even the time you sinned against him, he did not withdraw his love towards him. He's waiting patiently for you to come back to him. He's just expecting you. He did not withdraw his love at any point in time. He still loves you anyway. Even when you are sinning, he still loves you. The only difference is that he doesn't love that sin in you. It is the sin in you that he hates. But you, go, go. he still loves you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So I want you to have that mind in you that believe in it and walk with it that Jesus has interest in you. And one of the reasons why he came to this world is to destroy all the work of the de- all the works of the devil. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Including that thing that makes you to cry. Include that thing that you cannot share with nobody. Include that thing that is bothering you. When you think of that thing, the water just be flowing from your face. Without even wanting to cry. But it's so painful. I'm telling you, Jesus has come to destroy all those things. Praise the Lord, somebody. It is true that you don't know how it will happen. You have no clue about maybe it can be possible. But I'm telling you, to man, it can be possible. With God, all things are possible. That's what Luke chapter 1 verse 33 says. 37 says. With God, all things are possible. It can be heavy in you. It can be looks, there's no way. It is only for you there's no way. But for God, there's thousands of ways. Shout out to somebody. And that God has had so many ways. He's saying that he has interest in you. You may have got to the end of the road. It is only to you, not to our God. Praise the Lord. And that same God we do you good in the name of Jesus. Amen. And number four, he wants us to be in health. Third John chapter, third John verse two. Third John, because it has only one chapter. Third John verse two. Okay, this new version. The, the, the old one says, the old. Okay, let's, re- let's read the new one. Behold, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospered. So this God, because he has interest in you, he wants you to be in health, sound health. He doesn't want any sickness to be in you. He wants, you, he, want, he, he wants to prevail in everything. Give me Luke 5, 12, and 13. Luke 5, 12, and 13. Look at what happened to the leper. The discussion. I say Luke 5, 12, and 13. I want us to look at the discussion with Jesus and the leper. The leper came to Jesus. And he said, Luke chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seen Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thy will, thou canst make me clean. So he came to Jesus, this, le- this person, a leper, came to Jesus and said, if thy will, make me ke- clean. Listen to what Jesus said. And he put forth his hand and touched him. Do you know that people with leprosy, they don't stay in the midst of people? They are always afar off. 
But because of the love Jesus has for this man, he stretched forth his hand upon him. And he even went ahead of touching him. Sincerely speaking, if majority of us knew somebody has a disease that can be transferable, no, time of COVID, what happened? <laughs> Six feet apart. You have COVID? Don't, don't, come, don't come near me. COVID? Don't come near me. But Jesus, in his love, he went ahead and touched this man. And look at what the Bible says. And Jesus said, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. So, because of the interest that Jesus has for all of us, he doesn't want us to be in sickness. Jesus said, I will. Toba fe, I will. I will be clean. Praise the Lord. So it's just to tell you that about this Jesus, he doesn't want you to be in pain. He doesn't want you to be in sickness. Hmm. And in where we just read today, number five point is that he paid the price. Jesus paid the price because he has interest in you. He now went ahead to pay the price. That's number five. In the place that we just read, in Mark chapter five, the way he paid the price is in Isaiah 53, verse five. Isaiah 53, verse five. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. He went to the cross of Calvary and he prayed the price so that we will not continue in sickness any longer. Shout hallelujah, somebody. In most cases, we normally say that the goods I did not buy, I cannot pay. But opposite is for Jesus. He went ahead to pray the price so that you and I can be whole. That you and I can live a good life. That you and I should be able to live a life that is peaceful. That we continue to enjoy him again and again. Praise the Lord. So in um, verse where we just read, Mark 5 30. This woman of issue of blood, he had, she had that mind within herself that if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will meet who. Can somebody just, I want to ask a question from somebody. It's not going to be, it's, it's not going to be a hard question. So I want a volunteer. Just raise up your hand. One person. Okay. Can you please rise? How will you feel if somebody comes to your house and pick your car key and drove, drove it out? Call the police. <laughs> <laughs> Call the police. Yes. Right away. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Don't have a seat. That's the exact thing that this woman did. She did not take any permission from Jesus. She did not inform Jesus. She just had in her mind that, you know what? I've been hearing about this Jesus. She, he has done so many things. Okay, now, I'm going and I'll just tap his power without requesting. 
without informing, without asking for permission, she just went away. And she tapped into that anointing of ease. My dear evangelist said that if somebody does that for me, I will call the police. And of course, majority of us, we do one thing or the other, but not positive things, negative things. Because, uh -uh. I remember somebody came to our house one day, a friend of one of the children, and he just went to the fridge and took the chicken that was there and, and uh, cooked. One of my children is here today, said that, how dare you? Can you go into our fridge and take the chicken and eat without reminding the people in the house? Can I come to the house to do that? One, maybe he has forgotten. One of them said, ah, he did not forget, he's laughing. <laughs> and when she was saying it, I was around. I was, I was like, I wanted to say, tito, tito. He said, not, as I was blinking my eye, he did not even look at me. As I was saying, you know, eventually, I said, ah, that's okay. He said, he said, no, mommy, no, no, let me tell, let me tell him. Ah, let me tell her. Ah, no, 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 she will do that. Can I do that in the house? When she said that, when he said that again, I don't know what to say again because I blinked. She not stop. And I didn't tell me, ah, it's okay now. Ah, that's okay. Why can't you just confront her just like that and be, ah, I, I waved. He not keep quiet. I blinked and I spoke. He said, eh, eh. The reason why I'm saying, and he's still stressing out his points that, can I do that in the house? But this woman, that is exactly that she did. She did not ask for permission. She just knew that Jesus can do it. Just as somebody knows that she has a car. And she just took the key. And, and when Jesus heard of it, what did Jesus say to the woman? Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Shall we rise? Don't forget that the topic of today says he has interest in you. Amen and amen. amen. Jesus has interest in you. And there's no level Jesus cannot go in order to make everything right in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. The, this month, by the special grace of God, in the name of God the Father, Amen. and God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit, Amen. the month of August is our month of bodily and physical turnaround. Amen. Bodily slash physical turnaround. Amen. Amen. So begin to appreciate this great God. Begin to say, Daddy, I thank you. Begin to give him praise. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Oh, thank him because he loves you. Because he has interest in you. Thank him because he wants, to, he wants him to be like you. Thank him because he's ready to destroy everything that is giving you pain. Giving you sorrow. Thank him because he wants you to be, he wants you to be in good health. Thank him because he has paid the price. Thank him because he's on your side. He has interest in you. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank you. He's God Almighty. He changed not. He failed not. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Command that the will of God to prevail over and crush the will of Satan in your life right now in the name of Jesus. Command that the will of God to, to prevail over and crush the will of Satan is in your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Command it that the will of God to prevail to prevail over and crush the will of Satan is in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Every power that is enforcing the will of Satan in your life be consumed. 
pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Every power that is enforcing the will of Satan in my life be consumed now by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power that is enforcing the will of Satan in my life be consumed by fire now in the mighty name of Jesus. Consumed now by fire. Consumed now by fire. Consumed now by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Now pray. Every work of the devil in my life be consumed now by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every work of the devil. Is it sickness? Is it sorrow? Is it pain? Is it discomfort? discomfort? Is it disappointment? Is it sin? Is it whatever? Is it any trouble? Any problem anywhere? Ah. Any work of the devil? Right now. In my life, in my family, be consumed now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I begin to pray. Every yoke and stronghold of sickness and disease in my life be consumed now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every yoke, every stronghold of sickness and diseases in my life be consumed now in the name of Jesus. Now pray, power of total healing and honest fall upon me now. Power for total healing Power of total wholeness, fall upon me now in the name of Jesus. Begin to appreciate God for answering your prayer. Begin to give God the praise. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Thank you, love, in Jesus. We give you praise to give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you have interest in us. Loving Father, we appreciate you for you are a good God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you, King of Glory, for all that you have done for us. We appreciate you. We want, to, we want us to be like you. We honor you, Lord. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you, are, you don't want any sickness in us. Daddy, we appreciate you. We glorify you. Almighty Father, those interests that you have in us, Daddy, we pray that it shall continue to manifest. In the mighty name of Jesus, we shall continue to see them. In the mighty name of Jesus, and your name shall be glorified. Thank you for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' precious name we pray.